you guys, honestly, this is absolutely amazing. The fact that everyone on here is someone of color and just it's just such a beautiful thing to see and just seeing how diverse this panel is when Tokyo gets here too it's just absolutely amazing we're all self-made and it's absolutely so 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 beautiful and this is literally a definition of what beauty means to me so I absolutely love it but let's just get started why don't we so Supa let's start with you girl let's start with you because you got some you got some love out here girl I love it how like how does she even honestly how does she do it like honestly <laughs> Okay, your journey has been absolutely incredible. Thank you. And I just wanted to say congratulations on everything. Thank you so much. How do you keep up with your followers online? And how did the videos of you living your life evolve into an entire beauty brand? Um, basically, when, um, every, ever since I've been on social media, I've been so personable. So it was always easy for me to keep up with my followers because uh, I keep up with them. You know, they, um, I'm always on live. I'm always talking to them. I'm always asking questions, always asking for advice. So it's like, they're like my nieces, you know? Yeah. Uh, she's so cute. She's so cute. I love that. That's absolutely amazing. Next question. Courtney, so you're all about giving back to your followers from day one, which is absolutely amazing. And you've launched a series that builds inner strength, business skills to bring new entrepreneurs into the game, which is incredible. Tell us everything about who's the boss and what it means to you to reinvest back into the community that built you up. Um, who's, the black, who's the Boss is a platform, uh, basically, like you said, where I invest back into the community. I definitely feel like, you know, this, what we see maybe fast success is definitely um, contributed to my consumer, the community. So I feel like for me, giving back, it just, just really made sense. It was just authentic for me to do. I mean, you guys have my back. So anything that I can do to invest back into the community is something that's, you know, is a part of my foundation. So it's about just bringing real reality to television. I think when it comes to women of color, it's not about tearing each other down. Um, it's about building each Absolutely. other up. You know, <laughs> I mean, just recently backstage, she was like, I'm gonna send you something, girl. I said, girl, listen, I just bought hundreds and hundreds worth of dollars of your stuff already. So for me, it's about, <laughs> You know, it's about supporting that. one another, you know? So whatever I can do to support anyone on this panel and anybody else, that's what I'm gonna do. I can't, so let's support this eye. Let's look at, the, can you close your eyes for us? Can we get to zoom in on this eye on that she has on? Cause girl, this blend is so real. I just, Thank you. <laughs> I try to say that cause, <laughs> okay. So Leah. <laughs> yes, Manny. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? So you've talked about one of the perks of being an influencer, owning an indie brand, is that you own the relationship with the consumer, which is absolutely true. Yes. What do you mean by that, and how will that affect the future of the beauty industry? Well, I think, I mean, all of us here have a really, really strong founder-led companies, founder-led beauty brands. And I think it's like one of the biggest perks of being an influencer is that having that really tight community and the relationship with our own community that we represent, either that's small or big, um, I think influencers have the power to leverage their, not only the followership, but to represent the voice. So me as a skincare brand, and Crave Beauty founder. It was whole. It was built on, I guess, the motivation to press reset on the skincare industry because after interacting with my YouTube followers for so many years, I realized that a lot of us feel so overwhelmed and so confused and so lost with skincare, even though we have so many product options out there. And it just really didn't make sense. But I think after being in the beauty industry, I realized that there are a lot of beauty brands out there who create products for profits, which is pretty sad. Um, but I think it's a very interesting time to be in the beauty industry as an indie beauty brand owners because our like priority is our community and is our consumers. So I think we have a better connection uh, with the consumer, and I think that's not a lot of, uh, that's not something that commercial brands can offer. I completely agree 100%. Absolutely amazing. And I feel like as an influencer who owns a brand, you have like the finger on the pulse and you want to make things easier for your consumer. Who here has been to Sephora and walked in and was like, what do I get? I am so confused. So I feel like that really, really helps, and I think that's absolutely amazing. Okay, Supa, we're back to you. <laughs> can we just say I cannot believe you're even here right now when you literally had a baby two weeks ago Woo! 
literally in the delivery room, you were signing the papers to close your new warehouse between contractions. <laughs> So can you just please walk us through that experience and what does it mean to have your business so closely tied to your community, your city in New Orleans, and your family? Um, well, my family is a very important to me. Very, very. My family and my friends are extremely important to me. So I feel like everything I do with my company, it helps me, my family, and my friends. You know, so um, me signing the papers, the, the, it was supposed to be at one o'clock and my water broke at 12. So when I went to the hospital, um, I was, they was like, okay, well, we'll just reschedule it. I'm like, no, 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 come on, come to the hospital. Let me hurry up and sign before, you know, you see, like, you saw my building, you know? So um, they came, and they was, even, they was even surprised that I wanted to sign, and I'm like, I need this warehouse. Like, you know, I was already in it, but I needed to be mine, you know? And um, it's gonna do so much for me and my brand. And I'm, I was very excited, and I have to be here because my daughter needs stuff, my son needs stuff. So I have to keep a roof over the head, so I need to be here. Her brand is amazing, you guys. It, the quality of the product. What's up, Period. girl? Just in fashion. <laughs> Looking so dang cute. Okay, I'm like, girl, let me just, let me go back in my car. <laughs> Mama was late. No, that's absolutely amazing. Hi, Tokyo, how are you? Hey, baby. You look beautiful. Oh, thank you, likewise. I can't, I can't. Well, let's just, we're gonna ask you a question. You just got here, let's just go and rev it on up. Me. Let's do it. So, you learned how to do hair at a very, very young age, doing your sister's makeup. How did that journey go from doing your sister's makeup really, really little to doing Cardi and Kylie every single day? Take us through that journey with you. Well, the journey was quite simple. I mean, this is something I've always wanted to do and just something I'm like passionate about, I'm really good at. Um, I would say it's a God-given talent. So for me, it wasn't really much of a transition of, you know, going from this to that other than my work was just displayed in front of the world. So that was really the only difference. That's amazing. No, I absolutely. It's, <laughs> I feel like when you find a passion for something, that's your passion, and you just want to go gung-ho, and it's absolutely incredible. It's easy. You, what you've done is amazing. <laughs> Thank you. It's incredible. Have you, did you do Cardi's hair today? I didn't, because I had, that's why I'm late. I was trying to get I my knew silk it. I knew it. I was like, that's, that's, I knew it. I absolutely knew it. I'm like, it's because she's slaying some hair it right now. It takes a diva to get a diva together. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. That's amazing. Okay. So, Leah. Yes. So, you're based in New York and Seoul, mm -hmm. and your audience is extremely, extremely global. It goes from 10% to South Korea to 33% in the States. Mm -hmm. What are you doing that so many people resonate with worldwide and not just in your perspective areas? I talk a lot about acne, fighting acne skincare tips, and I think acne is like one thing that is very universal all across the world, right? Like, we mm -hmm. had one stage that we had acne, and I think when it comes to makeup and when it comes to fashion, you do cert like follow certain influencers that you resonate with look-wise, appearance-wise, but I think when it comes to skincare, um, the skincare tips could be pretty universal, so I think that's why there's pretty low barrier when it comes to ethnicity or the gender and the country. That's amazing. Skincare is so, so important and people, it's such a personal thing. And it I is. think that when people find someone that they love about skincare, it's like, I'm gonna keep watching you forever because that's my skin too. Like it's, I completely agree. So Courtney, so <clears throat> you have made history as only as the only African American owned company to hit both sides of the aisle in hair care, which is an absolutely incredible. Um, what does it mean to you to be able to serve different people who are on all kinds of hair journeys? Um, for me, you know, I always say, well, my VP always say, you got to begin with the end in mind. Um, so it was always about healthy hair growth. I didn't care how the person looked. It was just, if you want healthy hair, I'm the person to see. So to actually see my products sit in the general market aisle as well as the multicultural aisle is definitely a, a big deal. It's a, a dream come true. <laughs> you know, um, it, thank you. It's amazing. Thank you. So I always say, you know, history is one thing, but just to be a part of it is, is it's amazing. Just to 
do what you love to do, and that's, again, this transition everyone's hair to have long, flourishing hair if that's what they want. I just want to be that uh, go-to uh, brand. That's absolutely amazing. That what you just said, history is amazing, but being part of it's amazing is that just resonated with me, girl. I got chills. I was like, you're so right. <laughs> so Tokyo. So What's you that? are just that girl on Instagram for always modeling your own wigs, always just being, you know, prancing around on the streets, you know, I be living. <laughs> So what's it feel like to be able to actually model your own wigs and to, what inspires you to create them? Well, I mean, to make your own pieces and then like, you know, produce them and model them on Instagram. The, first of all, let me tell you how I started doing this. The way I started modeling my wigs and stuff was, I had just moved to DC. I didn't have any clientele yet. I had like basically started over. Didn't have any models to like model any of my products. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just do it myself. And I just started putting the wigs on, was dancing in the mirror, you know, doing my little videos. And then I started putting music to them, the videos started going viral, everybody started reposting them, and like it just turned into like this big thing, like that I never expected it to. And that's kind of how like I got famous and popular for my wigs. It's just me being myself, putting them on, and you know, being confident, selling it. Mm -hmm. Period. <laughs> oh, period. <laughs> period. That's amazing. It's, your journey is absolutely beautiful, and I. But no, it feels amazing, so and I'm just thankful that everyone, you know, supports my journey and everything that I've been doing so far. So. Love that. Oh. Okay. So. <laughs> See, look, my team actually warned me, because I usually wear my hair nice and big, but they say, you know you're on stage with Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Well, see, girl, she got all that hair, so girl, <laughs> that ain't fair. <laughs> I said, I'm going to be ready. <laughs> hair looks amazing, by the way. You guys let you cut. Okay, so this is actually a question for everyone, and it's going to be, what advice would you give to entrepreneurs in the audience that want to take the next step into launching their own product that are a little bit too nervous to do it? And we can just go down the row if you guys would like. Um, McDonald's not worrying about Burger King. So. <laughs> tea, tea, tea. When I came out with my makeup brands, it's, it's hundreds, it's thousands, you know. And I said, we all could make money. You know, we all could eat. I don't care who was selling makeup. I don't care who was doing makeup. I feel like it's, it's so many people. Everybody can't buy from one company. So if your company comes out, people are gonna buy from you too. And then when it comes with makeup, I have 30 palettes from 30 different companies. So your company could be one of the companies too. So don't, don't be afraid that other companies are out. Don't, don't be afraid of that. Like come out with your brand, no matter who else selling it, I'm gonna buy from you too. This person gonna buy from you too, it's important. I would definitely say anything that you decide to do, you need to just go ahead and start it. There's never a right time to get started, but today is that right time. And like she said, the only thing that a person cannot copy is you. Yeah. So as small, just in, keep infusing yourself within your brand, and that's the only thing that they can't copy. Yeah. So you just have to get started today. Agreed. I mean, starting a brand sounds really daunting and it could be in real reality, but if you think of it as like targeting the smallest viable group that you can go for, I think all of us here are representing a certain community to solve some unmet needs that we identified. So identifying those problems from your inner circle or the community that you want to serve, don't try to shout and serve everyone because you don't really become anything that way, but try to serve a specific group and really hone into crafting a voice that is suitable for those um, the audience and the consumer group. I think that's like the easiest way to think about it when it comes to entrepreneurship. Yeah. Gorge. Love it. Well, I have to agree my girl Stupa. I was actually going to say the same like vibe. Like it's never like too much. Like we can all make money. It's just, it's too much. This is a billion dollar industry. Like it's too much money out here for the all just to just make the money, work together, support each other and everything. So like I feel the same way. <laughs> and also, you don't have to, people try to come out swinging. You don't have to come out swinging. I started off small. I started off real small, and I, with my brand, I targeted all underdogs. All, I fell in love with underdogs. I got so many crayon cuties, and all of them are underdogs. Absolutely. And that's who I fell in love with, and that's who made my brand hot. Underdogs. 
and everybody feel like those people are small, but those people made my brand big. You know, so that's the only I target. She's just so inspiring. I just can't. Like, you're just incredible. I'm like, oh, I feel like I'm like really just listening. I can't, I can't even moderate. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. So I actually have one more question for you guys that is everyone, everyone's answer. So the term self-made is often given to people like Kylie Jenner, for example, or people who already had a leg up in some way. How is this kind of self-made different to you? <laughs> well, you know, there's different forms of self-made. I think the, the, the statement is subjective, actually. Um, when I look at myself, when I look at my peers, you know, for one, I always say, I'm God-made first. And then I would say, earthly, I'm self-made. <laughs> but for me, I took $500 and flipped it to $50 million in five yeah. years. Here you. Oh, my God. Oh, sweet God. So I would Period. consider that. I would consider that self-made and not necessarily having any help, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but going from my kitchen to over 50,000 stores, I would definitely say is, is self-made. A hundred percent. I need to get like her. <laughs> and I, I was, so, um, Leah, would you go like, would you like to answer that one too? Sorry, what was that? Um, would you like to answer as well? Uh, yeah, like, actually, I think. No, I would absolutely yeah. not like to answer that one. <laughs> I, mean, I think she kind of blew my Honestly, mind. <laughs> how are we going to top that? Like, that was absolutely incredible. That's exactly. True, we're, like, no, absolutely, that was amazing. So actually, we have some time for some audience Q&A questions. So if you guys have any questions, we would love to ask the audience and see what we can answer for anyone here. Okay, um, oh my God, am I picking? Are you kidding? Um, over here, right in the front, right at the front. Does she have a mic? Can we give her a microphone or? Uh, one of those cheerleader things, something. Huh? Hey. Okay. Do you need my mic? <laughs> oh, she can. She can project. Why would I give that? She can project. I, oh, you gotta hold it too. Why? Well, thank you. <laughs> why, why, why are you so cute? Oh. Huh? Coco. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry. I like. That's all she wanted. Oh, Tokyo. Yes. Why are you so cute? I don't know. Oh my God, you're so cute. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> that was all you had to say. Do you have a question? I appreciate it. <laughs> Manny, I have a uh, question for you. Perfect. Manny. Who? Manniana. Oh, for me. Leo. Okay. Leo okay. I was like, from what? here, from here. Yes, perfect, perfect. What does self-made mean to you? Oh, oh, T. <laughs> um, <laughs> Let's hear okay, it. Okay, okay. It's not my panel, but that's fine. <laughs> um, no, to me, self-made is about working hard and making your dreams come true for yourself. And even when I read that about Kylie, I was like, yeah, she might have had a leg up on the competition, but she made it happen for herself. Definitely. You know, and when you want to dream, you make it happen for yourself. You don't let other people do it for you. And if you have a passion for something, you follow it. Yeah. You know, and that is what self-made to me. It means people that are following their dreams and continuing to do what they love. And that's what self-made to me, means to me. So cute, I can't. <laughs> Thank you for asking. Tokyo. Hi, Tokyo. Hi. Where you at? Tokyo, I love you. Who love me? Over here. I don't know where I'm looking. Yes. I, I'm like, oh. yes, I love you, Tokyo. Hey, girl. Hey. <laughs> so when are your wigs going to be available to the masses? Well, they were on touchbytokyo.com, but I had to take a step back because I was working so hard on the road with, you know, my regular day-to-day -day clients, so I'm not able, and I'm, I'm the only one who hand touches and makes all my wigs. I do everything myself. So for me, it's, I don't have a lot of help. So it's for me, like, I can't, you know, work every day with the girls traveling day-to-day and still try and maintain, which sucks because I'm, you know, missing out on y'all money and stuff, but. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's just, I'm just so dedicated and I'm just so, like, I have to be hands-on, so if it's not me doing it, I just don't feel comfortable. But soon, I'm working on it, building a team and getting help, so. It'll be posted, though, once I'm, like, back in action again. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, my question is for Super. First off, I'll say congrats. Super. 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 <laughs> Super. 
Yes. Congratulations on your baby. Thank you so much. You're welcome. My question is, <laughs> my question is, what would be your advice, or more so, how did you start with your makeup brand? So, um, when I was getting booked and stuff, I had to keep booking makeup artists, and it was hard finding one that was permanent. So, I used to try to learn how to do my own makeup. And I used to do it on live, and I used to tear my face up. And everybody used to be so joked out laughing at me. And then when I was actually learning, like they were seeing that I was learning how to do my makeup from watching YouTubers. And then um, they asked me what I was using, what I was using, so I'm like, they're gonna keep asking me what I'm using, I'm gonna sell it. So when they kept asking me, I started selling it. Okay, I have a question. Over here. Hi. Um, my question is for Supa. Um, first of all, Supa, you're the reason I came to BeautyCon this year. Um, Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm absolutely in love with your brand, and my question is, how did you um, deal with the negativity when you were coming up with your brand, when you were trying to come into a market that already had so many? I blocked them. <laughs> the T. The T. The only T, period. Exactly. <laughs> Um, over here. Sydney. Hi. So my question is for Supa. Um, with you being a new again mom um, to Lele and Trey, I love them. Um, how do you manage that, especially with uh, your newborn? So I bought my mom a house directly around the corner from me. Amazing. And she is my daughter's nanny. We're over here. Okay, I just want to say super, I love you, Tokyo, Manny. I feel like I'm amongst people. Oh my God, this is crazy. Um, so how do you keep that I don't give a, I can't cuss attitude when you're trying to break through when you always have to be so censored and all of that? So how do you keep that like it doesn't matter, especially you super, because you're known for that. You know, I'm not censored. Exactly. <laughs> I'm not censored. I feel like I came up being myself and I'm never gonna change. I'm always gonna be myself. I'm never gonna mute myself, so. That's why I have two separate pages. I have a super cent and I have the crown case. The crown case, I w I'm never on it. I, I never get on there and talk crazy. Super cent, I will say what I want. Period. Hi everyone, I'm over here, hi. <laughs> My name is Jada. I just want to say you guys all look amazing up there on that Thank stage. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> yes, slaying. And then the red bottoms, oh my God. All right, let me move on. So, <laughs> what I want to say is, you know, you all started from the bottom, basically. You started with very small, um, you know, beginnings. I want to know, what was it that motivated you every single day, even though you didn't see the results, maybe as soon as you wanted? Because I know all of us in this audience, we may have YouTube channels or businesses we want to start, and sometimes it's hard to keep that vision in your head. Well, for me, you just got to want it and be hungry for it. Yes. And when I was coming up, bitch, I was starving. Oops, sorry, I'm... Okay. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I was starving, like I wanted it. Like I would be up, take, I would do 10, 12 girls a day, like up yeah. till three or four o'clock in the morning doing hair, like making wigs, everything. Like I just never stopped. Cause my thing is when you sleep in, somebody else is up trying to get your spot. So it's like, girl, you ain't no time for that. So it's just, you just gotta be hungry for it. And that's what I was and I made it, I guess. Period. Yeah. <laughs> and I think sometimes, you know, people want like a, a, a easier answer, but the, the fact of the matter is when they say, you have to put the work in. Yeah. And I believe a buyer, one of my buyers are here today, and I remember when I first got started and I had to apply to get into the store, and they said, okay, well, who does the shipping? Who's customer service? Who's this? And I was every person. I changed my name. I'm like, Carol, <laughs> Jennifer, yes. Linda, Lisa. So <laughs> you got to do what you have to do, you know? So you're going to wear many hats to get to where you need to be. But if you're passionate about it, it doesn't feel like it's a job. You know what I mean? It comes, that comes later. You're not even like, oh, I just, I wanna get into this and make money. I never thought about the money. I was like, listen, I don't wanna slay everybody's hair. Right. You know, so that was just secondary. But if you just know why you got into it, and if you have any family, and when I look at my kids, that's what keeps me pushing. Right. 
And we have time for one more question. So anyone? Oh, girl, I can't. I, I don't. I'm not sure how. A microphone? Just grab someone. I can't even see. Right here, right here. Right here, with the cute, the cute two-piece. And the cute two-piece with, yeah, you look adorable. She need a microphone. I have a mic, but I'm not with the cute two-piece. Over here. We'll do both. We'll do okay. both. <laughs> okay, my question is for Super. Hi, Super. My name is Kiana. Hi. I have a small makeup business, and I feel like, you know, with people who maybe like myself who are up and coming and trying to get noticed, you know, like you said, you look at the underdogs. What are things that you as a business owner look for in people that you would want to promote your brand and, you know, really get their stuff out there? What do we have to do? Um, the ones I target, they had to have a, um, a clean page. So they had to be a, a skilled and active makeup artist. When I say skilled, I mean they actually had to know what they were doing. And they had to be active, you know, like promote just as much as me. But not just promote me, promote themselves. You know, it wasn't even the, my underdogs at the Crayon Cuties, they're not just dedicated to me. Like they could promote whatever brand they want to promote. It's not just about me. I never said you cannot promote no other brand. It's not just about me. Like you can promote any other brand you want to, you know. But I know I, I cater to them as well. So when, I, when, I, when they promoted me, I promoted them. I featured them. I posted them on my page. Like I started out before the Crown case, I had a lot of followers. So I, I, I let them know that when you promote me, I promote you. They were underdogs. So they probably had 2,000 followers, 4,000 followers. A lot of them page grew because of the Crown case and I grew because of them. You know, so we helped each other. And I want to say from a, um, when it comes to like any type of ambassadors or like working with each other, quality is everything. everything. You cannot put out fire work and we see it and not support it. Like yeah, it just absolutely. it just wouldn't happen. But if the right, the lighting is right, the makeup is tight, yes. the hair is done, like it's going to circulate. So you just have to put that work in. Like if you want somebody to see it and and just really get it circulating, just put that extra work in and it will get you what you need, definitely. Yes. Definitely. Last question. Hello? Okay. Hi, Leah, I love you. I'm I a love huge you fan too. You. And Manny. So my question is regarding YouTube. When you guys first started, were you guys good at the editing? Because I absolutely love making videos and stuff on my Instagram and everything, but YouTube is like my Achilles heel when it comes to like editing and everything. Well, you can easily YouTube basic video editing, and I learned everything from YouTube, right, Manny? So did, did you I. have any like professional education when yep. it comes to video editing? So I think the tools or the tech technical matter it really doesn't matter as much as the content itself. I Would you agree? agree. Mm -hmm. yeah. I had a friend that taught me how to just cut, and from there I just learned how to do everything else myself. Yeah. And you just, you look it up, you learn, like I would stay up late at night till three in the morning just learning how to edit because I mm -hmm. wanted it. So you, when you have a drive and you want for it, you'll mm -hmm. make it happen. So as long as the content is something that's worthwhile watching, people will come to you, I believe. Agreed completely. Oh, you guys, you. I just want to say thank you to everyone who are coming. Thank you so much to the panelists. Thank you. you guys are absolutely amazing. Thank you for being here. You guys are incredible. But that is it for the panel. Thank you. Thank you, Thank guys. you guys so much. Thank you.